Let's prepare for tomorrow's summative assessment. Make sure that you try the worksheet before you're trying this video. If you are just copying along with the video, you're going to get nothing out of this. All right, here is our sound wave, our compression longitudinal waves. Let's label. This is a rarefaction. It's spread apart. It's rare that you would find an air molecule near there. Compression, this is when the air molecules are compressed together. And then the distance from compression to compression is our wavelength. This is an example moving through a string, but it's the same wave that moves through air. Now let's match the definitions. We know that sound is a change in air pressure due to a vibration or oscillation, so something going back and forth. Pitch is the highness or lowness of a note. A note is a specific pitch. It's a pitch that is pleasing to the human ear. This is that crossover between evolution and physics. Noise is just random frequencies, like white noise. White noise is still a bunch of frequencies, but they aren't quite notes. They aren't pleasing to the hu human ear. Wavelength is the distance between compressions on a sound wave. And then frequency is our number of vibrations or waves per second. One of the concert's attendees is 10 meters from the speaker. We want to find out how long it takes for the sound to reach them. While well, we're dealing with time, we're given a distance, and we're looking at the fact that sound travels at a known speed. Here's our formula. We only have this and the echo formula that relate distance and time together. 343 is the speed of sound, so I plug that in for my velocity. Meters is my distance. Whenever I have a variable in the denominator of a fraction, there's a shortcut. You can either do a couple steps of cross multiplication or remember to switch out the variable and the value that's by itself. So t equals 10 divided by 343. Throw that in my calculator and I get a very short time. 10 meters is not a huge distance. Sound travels pretty quick. So short distance, high velocity, we're going to take a short time. In this case, we travel a short distance in a short time. Now the same side sound reaches another attendee five seconds after being generated. We want to find out how far the attendee is from the speaker. Now think about it. Short time, short distance. This is a bigger time, so we're expecting a higher distance. It's still sound traveling at a distance over time. We're dealing with a speed of sound of 343, as always. We don't know the distance. We do know the time. So this is a one-step equation. What's happening to my variable? I'm taking x and dividing it by 5. So to undo that, I need to multiply both sides by 5. 5 times 343 gives me a distance of 1,715 meters, which makes sense. 10 meters, we had a small time, less than a second. So if we have more than a second for that sound to reach, it's going to be a much higher distance. A guitar's strings are 0.7 meters long. If the string plays a frequency of 392 hertz, what is the wavelength of the note? So we need to look at the wave pattern first. We know that guitars start and end with nodes because there's no motion at the end because those strings are held in place. In the middle, there's a big old antinode because those strings can vibrate back and forth. They can create that destructive and constructive interference. In this case, I only see one crest, not a crest and a trough, so I have half of a wavelength. So when I look at this problem, the string length is equal to half of a wavelength. I know the string length is 0.7. I want to know the wavelength. What's happening to my variable, lambda? I div I'm multiplying by one half. How do I undo it? I divide both sides by one half. Remember, one half is 0.5 as a decimal. 0.7 divided by 0.5 gives me a, a wavelength of 1.4 meters. And this is logical. The wavelength is always bigger than the tube length. Half of a wave fits in here, so it makes sense that the wavelength is twice as big as the tube, or in this case, string. The string of the guitar is a different medium than the air. So we need to find the speed of sound in that string. 
We know the frequency of the note being played. We know the wavelength of the note. So we use our frequency times wavelength formula. Again, the variables that you're given tell you which formula to use. I was given frequency. I solved for wavelength. So now I use them to solve for the velocity. Multiply them together, and that makes sense. Sound travels faster through solid materials than it does through air because the molecules are more lined up. This uncapped boom whacker plays a 392 hertz note. What wavelength is generated by the note? Now we can look at the wave pattern in this, uh, in this uh, instrument. We know that it ends with antinodes on both sides, node in the middle but we don't need to know that half of a wavelength fits in here to find the wavelength. We're given a frequency. We know that sound travels at 343 meters per second. So now we solve for the wavelength. We would have needed the tube length to use that half of a wavelength. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 392. That gives me a wavelength of 0.875 meters. Now that I have the wavelength, it's asking me how big I need to cut the tube to. So this is getting into how instruments are made. We know that there's half of a wavelength in there. So the length of the tube is equal to half of the total wavelength. So half of 0.875 gives me a tube length of about 0.44. So if you wanted to play a note at 392 on a boom whacker, you'd have to cut it down to 0.44 meters. Let's do the opposite with a capped boom whacker. We know the length of this tube. It's capped, so that means it has a node at the end. The air's not moving over there, but it's moving a lot near the end, so we have an antinode near the end. This gives us a quarter of a wavelength. So the one meter tube equals one quarter of the wavelength it plays. Divide both sides by 0.25 because again, wavelength is being multiplied by one fourth. So I'm gonna divide both sides by one fourth. That means my wavelength is four meters. Now that I know my wavelength, I can go back and find the frequency. Velocity is 343 because it's air. Frequency is unknown. Wavelength is 4. Frequency times 4, so I need to divide both sides by 4 to solve for the uh, frequency. Get 85.8 hertz, which is about an F.